Hello and welcome to Inside Indiana Business. I'm Gary Dick. The global supply chain crisis continues to ripple through the economy as companies and consumers clamor for everything from auto parts to asparagus. It is also helping to fuel a historic rise in inflation. What needs to be done to get store shelves stocked for the holidays? And can Indiana, the crossroads of America, play a role in the solution? For some answers, I'm pleased to be joined by Integrated Distribution Services CEO Mark DeFabus. Mark, thanks for joining us. Glad to be here. Uh, your company, a longtime third-party logistics uh, company here in Indiana, you're uh, on the front lines here. Mark, give us an idea. We hear about the supply chain crisis every day, but some examples you're seeing out there of Indiana manufacturers, retailers, and others who are really uh, impacted by this. Yeah, well, certainly manufacturers are having a hard time getting component parts, especially if they're coming from overseas. Um, the and, and, and retailers now trying to get products from overseas in for holiday season. But I think, uh, as typical, this is not the first time that supply chains have seen disruptions. So you're seeing many manufacturers and other retailers trying to, how, how do you overcome those disruptions? And that's usually with alternative means of transportation. It's usually dedicated, so they're either having to fly it in on planes, you're having a dedicated truck to bring it in, or even in some cases dedicated uh, ocean vessels to bring their containers in. All, but all that does is really add to inflation because the, the cost to circumvent from that standpoint is very, very expensive. Yeah, so if you're a, a manufacturer, your company here in Indiana, and you're wanting to get a container from the West Coast uh, here, what would be a normal wait time to, to, for that to happen versus what we're seeing now because of the supply chain uh, issues? Yeah, because from the West Coast, almost every container has to go through Chicago before it's going to get to Indianapolis. We don't have a direct route. In a typical time, a wait time in Chicago's rail yards to get a container off onto a chassis so it can be transported down south would be about three days. Uh, now you're seeing wait times significantly longer than that, and I think it's going to get even worse. Yeah, and as you look at, uh, Mark, obviously the truck driver shortage, the uh, the real issues in that industry, that began bef certainly before the pandemic and before this this did, but exacerbated by this now, this this truck driver. What can be done, in your view, as, a, as an executive in the industry, what would you like to see done to address some of these issues? Well, really, the, it, it's all about velocity. We need to keep product moving in the supply chain. And of course, the vast majority of that moves by truck. Because we're not gonna, I think, magically create more truck drivers overnight, we need to look at hours of service. Can those drivers that we currently have um, work maybe an hour or two longer? Uh, because of all the dwell time that they have. Um, can we, the big thing is the Drive Safe Act, which has been in Congress since early this year, which would allow 18 to 21 year olds to drive across state lines. I mean, right now they can drive an 18 wheeler from, from uh, South Bend to Evansville, but they can't go from Evansville into Kentucky, which is a little ridiculous. We, we need to get, we need to do some innovative things in the short term like that to really be able to have more more velocity within the supply chain. Yeah, Mark, everyone wants to know, um you know, when this is going to end or when it's going to get better. I know you and I were talking off camera before the interview. You don't think that's going to be anytime soon. No, I think if you look at it, the, the issues that we have um, are not going to clear themselves o o overnight. We're not going to, again, we're not going to within the next year have hundreds if not thousands of more truck drivers. We're not gonna have hundreds of thousands more trucks. Uh, you're not gonna have more, cha you know, thousands and hundreds of thousands of more chassis to pull containers. It's gonna be a while before we work out of this. Now there will be workarounds and I think we'll continue to see manufacturers and retailers do workarounds for the bottlenecks that, that we have in the supply chain. But again, it's just gonna be more expensive in the long run. Yeah, yeah. Mark, Mark, you're a board member at Connexus Indiana, that organization that is very supportive of the advanced manufacturing and logistics industries here. I know Connexus is gonna be involved in a, a listening uh, event next week with members of the Indiana congressional delegation. What do you anticipate that, that conversation is gonna be like? And is there a message or messages that will be delivered to the delegation? Absolutely, We're, um, Senator Braun and Senator Young have been gracious enough to host this event as a listening session 
so that we will have um, Indiana-based manufacturers as well as logistics companies to talk about the real world problems that we're facing with the supply chain and really present to our delegation practical solutions, both some short-term, some long-term that we need to start pursuing in order to correct this. Um, message that we hope to carry, and I think Indiana is well positioned, uh, Connexus has done some studies already. We're about to complete another one about commodity movement so we can take care of mm -hmm. the bottlenecks and the issues that we have within the state. But the message that we're gonna try to communicate to our congressional delegation, it's about velocity. We have yep. to keep things moving in the supply chain. All right, Mark DeFabe is CEO at Integrated Distribution Services. Mark, some great perspective on this very difficult uh, issue. Mark, thanks very much. I hope to see you soon. Thanks, Gary.